Hi everyone, this lesson is on weird or atypical signs and symptoms of celiac disease. So the signs and symptoms we're going to talk about in this lesson are going to be considered extra intestinal signs and symptoms, which would be either abnormal or more rare in patients who have celiac disease. Before we talk about those signs and symptoms, let's talk about what celiac disease is. So celiac disease is also known as gluten sensitive enteropathy and celiac sprue. It is a gastrointestinal disease involving autoimmune destruction of small bowel mucosa, leading to malabsorption and changes in bowel habits. So the keys here are that it involves autoimmune destruction. So this would be the patient's own immune system attacking itself. And in this case, it is attacking the small bowel mucosa. The mucosa is the inner lining of the small intestine. And the inner lining of the small intestine is involved in absorption of nutrients. And because of that damage to that inner lining, that mucosa that is involved in absorption of nutrients, this leads to malabsorption. And this malabsorption is going to lead to changes in bowel habits, which we're going to mention here in more detail in a moment. Now, this autoimmune destruction is going to be triggered by the gluten breakdown product known as gliadin or gliadin. So it's not gluten per se, it is actually the breakdown product of gluten that actually triggers the autoimmune attack. And then the proximal small intestine is actually going to be the area of the small intestine that's going to be most commonly affected. And this is the area of the gastrointestinal system that is involved in absorption of folate, iron, and calcium. And these are all going to be important when we talk about the signs and symptoms in the next upcoming slides. And the proximal small intestine is going to be the first part of the small intestine known as the duodenum. So some of the most common signs and symptoms of celiac disease are abdominal pain, diarrhea, so this is going to be that change in bowel habit we talked about before, and malabsorption and subsequent weight loss. So these are going to be some of the most common findings in celiac disease, but the topic of this lesson is that there are weird or atypical signs and symptoms that can also occur in celiac disease that may not actually present as patients may expect them to. So we're going to talk about those as we go through this lesson. So the first one we're going to talk about here is anemia. So anemia is going to be a low hemoglobin count or a low red blood cell count. Anemia is going to occur in approximately 10 to 15 percent of patients with celiac disease. And there are multiple mechanisms as to how this anemia occurs. One of those mechanisms is going to be celiac disease induced inflammation of the proximal small intestine. As we mentioned before, this is going to be the most commonly affected area of the gastrointestinal system in celiac disease. And as we just mentioned, the proximal small intestine or the duodenum is going to be the location where iron and folate are absorbed. So because of this inflammation in that area, iron and folate absorption are going to be impaired. And we'll mention how iron and folate malabsorption can lead to anemia here in a moment. The second cause of anemia in celiac disease can occur in severe cases of celiac disease where vitamin B12 absorption is impacted. So this is again going to occur in more severe cases, and this is where the ileum, the last part of the small intestine, is involved. So this would be what we would call ileal involvement in this particular case. And in the third mechanism of anemia in celiac disease is through gastrointestinal bleeding. So this gastrointestinal bleeding can occur in some cases of celiac disease, and it's more going to be due to a prothrombin deficiency. So prothrombin deficiency is going to be related to coagulation. And this prothrombin deficiency itself is going to be due to a vitamin K deficiency. So vitamin K deficiency can occur in celiac disease as well. So these are the three main mechanisms for anemia occurring in celiac disease. So iron deficiency, folate deficiency, and vitamin B12 deficiency are going to be the causes of anemia in patients with celiac disease. So iron deficiency can occur from inflammation of the proximal small intestine, but can also occur from gastrointestinal bleeding. If there is a very slow gastrointestinal bleed, which is not going to be noticed by the patient, it's going to often be occult bleeding, which means that it's going to be hidden. It's not going to be observed by the patient, but there can be some small amounts of blood in the stool. Over time, this can lead to an iron deficiency and ultimately lead to an iron deficiency anemia because red blood cells are full of iron. Iron is required for hemoglobin synthesis. The second is going to be due to a folate deficiency. So as mentioned before, folate is absorbed in this proximal small intestine. So a folate deficiency can lead to what we would call a macrocytic anemia. So this is where the red blood cells are larger in size, but there's going to be less of them. 
And vitamin B12 deficiency can also occur in those severe cases we mentioned earlier, which can also cause a macrocytic anemia. So some of the signs and symptoms that can occur from anemia in patients with celiac disease include fatigue, pallor, so being more pale, weakness, presyncope or syncope. Presyncope is going to be feeling very lightheaded. Syncope is actually where a patient faints, shortness of breath, and tachycardia, which is a high heart rate. So these are some of the general signs and symptoms of anemia, which can occur from a wide variety of causes, but one of those causes is celiac disease. So some of these can be found in celiac disease. And then there are particular, more specific and characteristic signs and symptoms of iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia. And some of these include coilonychia. Coilonychia is where there is spoon-shaped nails. Pica is also another finding. This is where the patient has a craving for inedible material like dirt. And one thing that patients with iron deficiency particularly crave is ice. So they like to eat ice. This is a typical finding in iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia. And then iron deficiency itself is associated with restless legs syndrome. So these are some of the findings that we can see in patients who have iron deficiency, which could be related to an impaired absorption of iron from celiac disease. The next category of findings that could be found in celiac disease are mouth signs and symptoms. So nutrient deficiencies and other pathophysiological mechanisms can lead to signs and symptoms found in the oral cavity or surrounding the oral cavity, so in or around the mouth. One of them is going to be what is called angular chelitis. So angular chelitis is where there is cracking of the lips at the corners of the lips. So this is inflammation and cracking at the corners of the lips. This is going to be due to an iron deficiency. So this is something that can be added to those signs and symptoms of iron deficiency we talked about in the last slide. We can also see aphthous ulcers or aphthous stomatitis. So aphthous ulcers are what are known as canker sores. So these can be found in a vitamin B12 deficiency and an iron deficiency. Again, those Deficiencies we talked about in the last slide can relate to some of these findings here we're talking about in this slide. And then atrophic glossitis is also something that can also be found in patients with celiac disease. So atrophic glossitis is where the patient's tongue is very smooth and inflamed. So this is something that can occur from an iron deficiency as well. So the third group of weird signs and symptoms that occur in celiac disease are from a vitamin D and calcium deficiency. So inflammation of the intestinal tract that can occur from that autoimmune destruction in celiac disease we talked about before can lead to issues with absorption of vitamin D and calcium. So this can ultimately lead to a vitamin D and calcium deficiency. And as mentioned before, calcium is absorbed in the proximal small intestine, the duodenum. And again, this is the most commonly affected area of the small intestine in celiac disease. So vitamin D and calcium deficiencies can lead to particular signs and symptoms. With regards to vitamin D deficiency, this can lead to fatigue and lethargy, depression-like symptoms, so patients can feel very tired and they can have a lower mood than usual, and they can also have increased risk of respiratory infections. There are some other associated findings with a vitamin D deficiency as well. And with regards to signs and symptoms of a calcium deficiency, these can include the clinical sign known as Chavostek sign. So if you want to learn more about Chavostek sign, please look this up to see how this is performed. The second is motor weakness, and in some severe cases of calcium deficiency or hypocalcemia, seizures can also occur as well. Now, some other issues that can occur from long-term reductions in vitamin D and calcium can lead to particular issues with bones, and the ones we're going to talk about here are osteopenia and subsequent osteoporosis. So osteopenia is going to be a mild reduction in bone density, and osteoporosis is going to be a more severe reduction in bone density, often with the bone being hollowed out. And osteopenia and osteoporosis are going to be more likely to occur in those with long-standing untreated celiac disease, and more specifically, long-term or chronic vitamin D and calcium deficiencies due to the celiac disease that are not treated. Osteopenia and osteoporosis may affect up to 30% of chronic patients, and it is more likely to occur later in life. So the signs and symptoms of osteopenia and osteoporosis include a decreased bone mineral density. This is going to be the definition of osteopenia. And then osteoporosis is going to involve increased risk of fracturing. And one particular bone that is often going to be the culprit in osteoporosis, especially in older female patients, is the femur, which is the main 
largest bone in the upper thigh. So a femur or hip fracture in those patients is an automatic diagnosis of osteoporosis. The fourth category of atypical or weird signs and symptoms of celiac disease include neurological and psychological symptoms. So certain neurological signs and symptoms can occur in celiac disease due to vitamin B12 and calcium deficiency. So it all comes back again to some of those nutrients we talked about before. So vitamin B12 deficiency can lead to increased levels of a particular metabolic byproduct. And that byproduct is known as methylmalonic acid. So when there are lower levels of vitamin B12, this methylmalonic acid can start to increase and it can lead to damage of neurons. So it can lead to disruption and subsequent damage to neurons of the central nervous system. So some of the signs and symptoms of a vitamin B12 deficiency that are caused by that methylmalonic acid induced disruption to neurons of the central nervous system include depression. So depression can be often a very important symptom of vitamin B12 deficiency that is not recognized. So this can often be seen, especially in older patients. Reduced cognitive functioning can also occur in patients with a vitamin B12 deficiency. And in older patients, this can actually appear like dementia in some patients. Paresthesias can also occur. These paresthesias are numbness, tingling sensations in different parts of the body, especially the extremities, so the arms and the legs. And it's going to be symmetric paresthesia. So if it occurs on one side, so if it's occurring on one leg, it's also going to occur on the other leg as well. We can also see reduced two-point discrimination in vitamin B12 deficiency. So reduced two-point discrimination is where the patient is not able to discriminate between two points as easily as they should or as appropriately as they should. There can also be reduced proprioception, so a reduced ability to balance properly. And these signs and symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency can become irreversible if the vitamin B12 deficiency is not treated. So if it is long-standing, so it's chronic and untreated, these signs and symptoms can become irreversible as that methylmalonic acid increases and leads to irreversible or irreparable damage to neurons of the central nervous system. And as I mentioned before, calcium deficiency can also lead to some neurological symptoms as well, including motor weakness, seizures, and ataxia is another one. So these are all very atypical and very rare signs and symptoms of celiac disease. So these can be something to think about with patients who have a lot of these other signs and symptoms we talked about throughout this lesson. Another atypical or weird finding in celiac disease is a finding on the skin. And that particular finding is known as dermatitis herpetiformis. So dermatitis herpetiformis occurs in approximately 10 to 20% of patients with celiac disease. And it can look like this. So dermatitis herpetiformis is considered to be an inflammatory vesiculobullous rash. So it's inflammatory and it involves vesicles and bulla. So vesicles are small fluid-filled raised skin lesions and bulla are larger fluid-filled skin lesions. You can also see papules, so just raised skin lesions can also occur as well. And the skin rash is considered to be an autoimmune cutaneous eruption. So this skin rash is going to be intensely pruritic, meaning that it is intensely itchy, so it's very, very itchy for the patient. And the most common sites include the forearms, the thighs and buttocks, the knees and the scalp. And more specifically, it's going to commonly affect the extensor surfaces of these sites we mentioned here. Only a subset of patients with celiac disease will have dermatitis herpetiformis. So not all patients, only some. And as mentioned before, it's going to be roughly 10 to 20% of patients. But it's important to note that if the patient has dermatitis herpetiformis, they have celiac disease. So this skin finding is considered pathognomonic for celiac disease, meaning that when they have this particular skin rash, they automatically have a diagnosis of celiac disease. So only a subset of patients of celiac disease will have dermatitis herpetiformis, but all patients who have dermatitis herpetiformis have celiac disease. And the last weird or atypical finding of celiac disease is reproductive system dysfunction. So reproductive system dysfunction may be due to a variety of nutrient deficiencies from celiac disease. So a lot of those nutrient deficiencies we talked about earlier on in this lesson may lead to hormonal imbalances that alter reproductive system functioning. So in female patients, we can see delayed menarche. So menarche is going to be the female patient's first period or menstrual cycle. So this can be delayed in patients who have celiac disease. 
amenorrhea can occur in some female patients with celiac disease as well. So amenorrhea is going to be a lack of a menstrual cycle for at least six months. In infertility, patients with celiac disease are more likely to be infertile than non-celiac disease patients. And in male patients, we can also see reproductive system dysfunction. And these include impotence and infertility. So male patients with celiac disease could also have an increased risk for infertility as well. So if you want to learn more about celiac disease and how it's diagnosed and treated, please check out my full lesson on this topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.